you very much. So for everybody, for all international guests, or let's say US, uh, Americans, Canadians, or whoever is here, who is not from Austria and Germany, most of these people know me, uh, I want to give you a short overview about pinball in Austria and how it evolved and how it uh, has done and progressed in the last 10 of years. So a short introduction of myself. My name is Stefan. I'm playing pinball since the mid of 2000s. The first pinball machine what I bought was a Bug Rogers, but I always say it's Cyclone because I picked it up on the same time and I really love this game and collected then from end of the 2000s till now more than 100 games what uh, I have in our pinball club in the Flip Arena Vöcklerbrock and uh, which we where we always enjoy with a lot of people to play the games and uh, have a lot of fun. In 2015, I started to sell as well pinball machines. In the past, I was working once at KTM as a motorcycle manufacturer. And so the theme full throttle from Highway Pinball was very approaching to me. And I decided to, to buy this game and even then decided to, to buy more of them and start to sell them. This was in mid 2015. And from then on, it has been a continuous grow since two years. It's my main business and not the side business. And even a month ago, I opened RS Pinball Germany. We've located in Bavaria, where we have an, a small show, showroom right now. But the new building is in progress and shall open in mid-2025 with 30 games in there. So today I will give you a short overview about Austria, very short and brief, and some hard facts about uh, the, the pinball. I will go with you a bit through the pinball culture. So what, where can you find pinball? Where, which mu museums do we have? Which associations? Where can you play pinball and find them? And as well, what are we doing in Austria for pinball education? Then we go into a closer look onto a competitive uh, pinball scene how it's built up in Austria, and a close look as well onto dates and figures from IFPA. I was nearly 10 years country director in Austria for IFPA, and I asked Josh Sharp this year to send me all the data and excerpt of the IFPA database for all tournaments what have been done in Austria. And I analyzed all this data and give a short outlook on how many tournaments have been done, how many locations we had, and how it's going on. And Let's have a look on what we can do to even further grow pinball in the future. And this year is a very large, big year for Austria and pinball uh, because we are organizing, so in 2025, the European Pinball Championship in Vöcklerbrock in Upper Austria, and we are organizing in uh, Steiermark the IFPA 20. So we let's say, will be the capital of the world somehow for competitive pinball, hopefully, in 2025. So in Europe, you find the tiny, small Austria, which is only 80,000 square meters, so it's only around 50% of Illinois <laughs> in, the, in the center of Austria. Our population is around 9 million people, and we speak German. We are famous in the US for sound of music. <laughs> Even if a lot of Austrians don't know the movie, everybody asks us in the States, do you know it? It's very famous over here. What I can uh, tell you, it was uh, recorded in the area of Salzkammergut. And the area of Salzkammergut is the area where the European pinball champion will take place next year. In, in the near uh, Graz, in the southern area, in Badendorf, there will be the IFPA. And so we have a good triangle when you're coming to Austria to join the tournaments. You can fly to Vienna, you can go by train to Vöcklerbruck, or you go by train, for example, to Graz, or can fly to Graz and then go by car to Badendorf. We have uh, our top pinball player is sitting here in the row. It's Markus Stix. His top position was number 16th in the world. Congratulations. And right now we have 395 ranked pinball players in the IFPA database. In Austria, you find four pinball museums. One where we had uh, before the seminar from Günther, it's the Terra Technica. We call it an Austrian pinball museum, even if it's on the border to Czech Republic, but it's owned by an Austrian. <laughs> then 
Günther himself, he has as well another pinball museum in Ruprechtshofen, the Pin Digiland, which is also very nice to have a look on and to visit. We have uh, a flipper museum in Lichtenau. This is specialized on Gottlieb games. So if you're interested in Gottlieb games, go there. They have all of them. And then we have the Kindergram in Neulenkbach. So it's specialized on uh, Bailey Williams games. And he have as well a big Lego collection. What you see, all these museums are located in a very close area together in, let's say, Lower Austria near Vienna. And so there we have a high density of uh, pinball culture, if you would see it like this. The amount of associations in Austria have been growing from 2012 on, and I call this, this is the new pinball era in Austria. Everything started with the Flipper SV, which is a kind of umbrella organization. Uh, so most clubs are members or the member of the single associations. What you see there are a lot of members as well in the uh, Flipper SV. So it does work uh, over whole Austria. It does not have a fixed location by itself, but they organize and support. For example, they support strong the Flipniks on the Austrian Pimple Open. They support participants when they go to competitions and so on. Very short afterwards, or nearly on the same time, the Flipniks in uh, Steiermark have been founded, and uh, three years later, Kugelklopfer in Upper Austria, followed by our club in Vöcklerbruck in 2017. And very young, there is coming the Re Flipper Rebläuser, the multiplayer and uh, Flipper Asyl in Vienna. So we have them here as well on the map. We know that we have very low density in the uh, Tyrol area, uh, but everything is growing a bit, and let's hope that in further uh, parts of Austria, more clubs and asso associations or places where you can play pinball and enjoy it will come up. So this should give you a good overview, and as well the Google links and the presentation I will uh, upload later on to the website as well, that everybody can download it, that you find the links if somebody wants want to go to Austria and uh, find locations where you can play, that you have here the links as well available. Uh, where can you find pinball machines if you're coming to Austria, uh, for example, on a business trip or on vacation? Obviously, on pinballmap.com. I think this is the most actual database as well for the Austrian machines. On pin side maps, sometimes uh, these data are quite old. And especially when you have a look on Vienna area, quite accurate and detail is flipperliste.at. Uh, where you find as well always the pictures and locations where you can play pinball. What are we doing for education? So it was not long ago, so three years ago, Abe from Abe Flips, Abraham, started to play pinball. And he was interested in uh, how do you really play pinball? Where do you learn the skills? And he watched a lot of videos from all the streamers. And he decided, OK, I like this, but I want to have more available. I want to have it in English. I want to have it in German. And so he started the YouTube channel Abe Flips. Right now, he have around slightly below 6,000 subscribers. He have more than 350,000 views. And he started very recently a Kickstarter project for a movie called Mastering Pinball. So he rents. So this uh, Kickstarter project was very successful. Uh, he aimed, I think it was something like 10,000 euros. He reached more than 20,000. So he rented already high-speed cameras, made some additional uh, uh, recordings. He met uh, Escher at event. He met uh, Johannes Ostermeyer and drove to him to Munich. And so they did a lot of recordings. And due to the high amount of uh, patrons, what he had in the Kickstarter project, there is additional chapter of tournament play in the in the movie. The target is that this will be available then in uh, mid-2025. I shortly check if it works here to go on the link and to shortly show you one of the videos. It's now there so that you see the 
the quality of information what he's doing. Uh, this is video is without sound, Martin. So he did as well some special videos like a loop. So if you have uh, an arcade or if you have a pinball club and people want to learn how to play pinball, you can run this video in a loop on your television and it shows the different skills uh, with the additional texts and information of how to play it. It was already reposted as well by, by Stern and by others, so he got a lot of hits and it was a really good success and he does really a, an amazing job with these uh, videos. And we are very good looking forward on his movie, which will be between 60 and 90 minutes and come out next, next year. Good. You find here then later in my presentation as well the link to this loop and you find as well the link to his playlist so that you can have a look on all his videos uh, in a, on a separate session, let's say. So, pinball sports in Austria and competitive uh, pinball playing. What is the fundament of the pinball or competitive pinball? It's a lot of tournaments, it's smaller tournaments, it's larger tournaments, it's leagues. So all of these we do have in Austria and we do have, let's say, very strong since 2012 around where all these pinball clubs have been started and the leagues have been introduced. And in addition, we have then uh, the Austrian Pinball Championship Series, which started in 2014, where Austria was one of the first countries in Europe which started these events and took it over from IFPA and have then a yearly IFPA fi final and uh, crowned the champion. Next year, we will have as well the EPC and as overall masterpiece, there will be the IFPA. So in competitive play of pinball, uh, I experience in my club is uh, when we playing our league, uh, we register each league event as a separate IFPA tournament. And when new people are coming, and even if they only get 0.5 points or 0.03 points or whatever, they find their name in the list and they get injected the pinball drug. So they like to play it, they're coming more and more often, and they enjoy it. And this is really, this was boosting the competitive play on our location. In the past, with the IFPA leagues, we registered one event over the whole year. So the league participants played 192 games for one IFPA result. And so we decided, no, it's not worth, makes no sense. We separate the league from IFPA. We make always the events where you have the IFPA tournament. And the qualification is a Swiss uh, system where you play 16 rounds. And this result goes into the Austrian Pinball League, which is separated from IFPA. But this really helps to bring the people into the events and more and more uh, people are coming into the hobby and these, the larger tournaments are growing too. So in the competitive scene, as uh, mentioned, we have several leagues. We have Flipperina, Kugelklopfer, Flipnik, Flipper, Asyl, Rebläuse and Multiplayer. So these are the continuous uh, clubs where we are playing uh, and locations which, uh, which we have. So we have overall uh, created once a logo for the Austrian Pinball Leagues and then there is uh, the logo picture available for the single leagues as well with, th with their name. And uh, due to the environment what you have in the different regions in Austria we keep it for the leagues quite flexible so we don't have a strict system let's say like in American football soccer or NBA or whatever you have this rule and always it need to be exactly like this because you need to consider the boundary conditions we have a club with 50 games where the people can play and you can gather a lot of people then we have other people uh, they meet regularly, but they always meet. One is uh, this person, and then it's at this person, and then it's on another location, and they are, have a different amount of machines. And so they define a system how they play regularly and meet, and how they define at the end of, e of the year the best players. And so we keep this separate from IFPA and from the Austrian League. But still, we want to have it there competitive and to have this uh, sport character available. From these leagues, uh, we have then as well a league final end of the year. That means the best four players of each league meet together on a league final. 
uh, because Austria is not so large and it's let's say like six competitive leagues which are most of the time meeting or five or six depending on availability of timing from the persons so we usually play then a round robin which means you have 20 or 24 participants and after the round robin you count the points uh, of the wins from the people in the single leagues then you know who is the best league and who is the best league player in Austria and then they get the trophy therefore the Austrian Championship Series I shortly mentioned and we have the Austrian Pinball Open where we usually have 100 to 120 participants. This started in 2013 with once an event in a cinema where a lot of pinball machines have been brought to and then uh, the real big series started with the APO in uh, Badendorf. I think timing might be a bit far so I, I go a bit faster. Then in the Austrian Championship Series, I collected as well all the results. You see, we have always different locations. So since 2017, it was in our club. On the Pinball League Final, it was uh, several times in our club, but we started to rotate to go on different locations that the people and players see different uh, events. So uh, the top pinball players, what we had, shortly mentioned before, Markus, who joined already six times the IFBA and several others which have been once or two players, Stefan Karlhuber and Roland Schwarz, who joined already four times the IFBA. So the comp competitive thinking and joining on the tournaments is growing and is very strong and large. And uh, when you have a look on Markus and have a look on his IFBA number, I think it's 29. So he is playing really long already and still very competitive in the, and in the top 100 and he will go on. So from the analysis of the data from the 10 years uh, or from the overall data what is available, uh, I, s I say there we have done in Austria 350 tournaments which are registered for IFPA. It was organized by 20 different tournament directors. I think that's quite an interesting figure to see how many people have done here these main jobs and overall it was 32 different locations. And when you have a closer look, then you see that the amount of games what have been done in either pinball associations and their clubs uh, or on public uh, locations is three-fourths, so 75% of the overall tournament plays. Uh, when the new pinball era 2012 started, several people came up and uh, it was a lot played as well on private locations. This is the reason why we have here 92 events, but this have been decreased in the last years. And this is uh, from this data, I say uh, the data what is pre-2012 in IFPA, that's mainly single results uh, and single data from big events and Austrian, champion, uh, Austrian pinball champion race where Several people here, Jimmy, Markus, and others joined in the past. So here is only single results available. And then really from 2011, 2012, IFPA data have been continuously filled. And this is the modern pinball landscape from my point of view as we see it in Austria. And uh, obviously there was a big hit because there was no IFPA competitive playing due to COVID in, in the section, but you see a very strong continuous growing in pinball. Uh, what is very interesting on these locations and what I shortly mentioned before, this is the peak, uh, what I mentioned when the associations came up, a lot of pinball players, motivated people. The Austrians know, for example, in Wales, we had Pin Novi, they had a regular league, they had several events and some other locations. But these have been decreased and quite strong because if you organize already once a tournament, you know it's a lot of effort. It's not always getting honored as you would maybe like to have it. The people, uh, you, it's typically an open event so everybody can come there. So you have maybe sometimes people in your location which you don't like. And I think these are some of the reasons why these pub uh, private uh, events are decreasing and why it's important to have really public locations, pinball clubs who drive the sports forward and create these, these events.
So in Austria, over the past years, this uh, leaded to around five active tournament directors, what we had and which are regularly organizing uh, these events and tournaments. And we have seen now in the last year where the clubs uh, close to Vienna started, there are some now new, we've, because of the all these acti activities, we got gathered some new pinball people. Like, for example, Alois Koza, he was in a podcast with Jeff Tiolis uh, when he was in Jekpin, and there was uh, already some news about pinball in Austria. He is playing now since three years. He joined once IFPA. He won the novice section in Jekpin, and he is one of the guys who is driving pinball a bit forward in Vienna and want to org organize tournaments. So we have here the people. Uh, but let's see how it really goes forward in the future because you always need to consider the environment what you have as well, the legal environment. In, in Vienna, there are people, they want to do something, but it's not allowed to have more than three pinball machines on a public location. So we see the amount of tournaments which are organized per tournament director have been growing over the last years, very strong. And uh, this is because Often these tournament directors are associated with one of these clubs and they are driving uh, the club and this helps as well to get some income to uh, help the club to live and to cover all the costs for rent and whatever is there. I shortly go over this, gives only an overview about in which season of the year most tournaments have been done since 2012. And uh, this is one of... Uh, one slide what I think is very important. What can you do to drive pinball forward in the future? Uh, so it's important to get these uh, people uh, which are interested in uh, to have locations and really to push it. Uh, this helps us on the competitive play. We achieved it uh, now let's say with four or five locations what we have but this should further grow. And uh, last second I jump further to the EPC. Uh, so next year in Vöcklerbruck, we're organizing the European Pinball Championship, which will be a huge event. We are organizing 140 pinball machines in an ice hockey hall. There will be 320 tournament participants, which will be there. We will have a dedicated uh, high score tournaments, for example, a Jersey Jack high score tournament. So the EPC is a major we will have uh, most likely between two and four further IFPA certified plus tournaments. So there is a lot of whopper points for competitive players to, to gain. With the 320 participants on the EP EPC main, it's around 350 to 400 whopper points for the winner of this tournament, what we calculated. And for the side tournament uh, and for the classics, it's as well 150 whopper points or more for the winner. So if somebody would run through everything, it's maybe 700 or more whopper points. So that's really a big competitive playing. Uh, we have luckily enough time for the four and a half days that we uh, give enough time for the qualification, qualification sessions and for the finals. And details will be uh, announced and for the registration will be done end of the year. Uh, we have this big public location, a big supermarket, several restaurants, uh, walking distance, and as well several hotels in walking distance, so that the competitive player really, uh, you can fly to Vienna, go by train to Vöcklerbruck, and then either you have a scooter or you walk by yourself and you enjoy playing pinball. Everything will be as well uh, further supported by some manufacturers. So there will be some cool prices, uh, what we have. And the main organizers is, let's say, uh, myself, the company, and my club, but as well, very strong support from the Austrian Pinball Club, from Flipnik in Badendorf, from Kugelklopfer, and as well in Germany from another French club that we can gather these 140 machines. Last but not least, one slide for the IFPA. So IFPA is mentioned in Badendorf. The location is very well known already since a lot of years. Martin have done uh, several reports already. I think twice or three times uh, you have been there. JDL have streamed several times from this location. It's 100 pinball machines continuously on the location around 500 square meters of place. 
And so that will be for sure a great event uh, for these 80 competitive players and for some visitors. And we are very happy in Austria to warm welcome everybody next year and even before afterwards for these big competitions. Thank you very much.